What's up guys, it's Mike with Shallow Reefing. Come back at you with another video. And today, if you saw the last video, you know I might have old tank syndrome, AKA phosphate and nitrate imbalance because things are happening in the tank and I'm not keeping up with it the way I should. So we're gonna come up with a solution. This was totally gonna be in my other video, but I figured you guys would really wanna see this. It is a DIY um, Kato reactor. Should be pretty easy. Let's see how it turns out. So my wife and I went to Pop Shelf and I saw this a, what is it? Two and a half gallon little trash can. So my plan is to do this. I currently have the perfect pump for this. It's about a hundred gallon per hour. Oh, don't, ah, shit. Note to self, unplug the pump. I'm sorry, honey. I'm gonna clean that up right now. There, there we go, there we go. Like it never even happened. So like I was saying, I had the perfect pump for this. This little CJ pump, 100 gallon per hour, you know, not too much, but it should be enough to have decent flow in this. I'm planning on taking this pump, cutting a hole, putting the pump right there, and have the water come through the bottom, circulate around, and then before it gets to the top, probably right about there, that should be about where the water level is. I'm gonna have it drain out with like a little elbow that I'm gonna kinda do a little hole saw and cut in. And it should be super simple. Keyword should be. You know, if you've watched any of my videos, nothing ever goes to plan. I'm tired of YouTubers who do it like on the first try. It's BS, it doesn't work. I do not edit any of this stuff out so that you can see my frustration. But let's, hopefully I'm not foreshadowing. I don't know, I'll probably comment right here if I'm doing that. Side note, if you don't know why this Brightwell brick is in a gallon of freshly mixed salt water, it is because it is leaching phosphate. Go look at the previous video. I'll put that at the end of this video so you can kind of see why I'm doing this. Also, I'm, I'm in the process of rinsing out all my media because it is probably also leaching some phosphate. Maybe not as much as Brightwell brick because it's not as much, but it's those little export cubes and a little bit of marine pure and clean out those baggies. So let's get started on this project right now while my son is asleep. You can't even tell I spilled all that water. Oh shoot, yeah, you can. You can kind of tell I spilled water. Oh my God, this workbench is a complete mess. We took the car up to Ohio and all this stuff came out and people have been raiding my garage for things. So let me clean this up. That is way more like it. All right, so let's pick our spade or pedal bits and start drilling. All right, I got my two holes, and remember, this does not need to be watertight because the main purpose of this is just to hold the Kato in there so that it just stays and all the nastiness is in here. It doesn't really matter if I have like uniseals or anything like that. We're just trying to get this thing where it's gonna be in the sump, and if it leaks in the sump, who gives a crap? That's where all the water is. All right, so water goes in through here, shoots around, circulates, and comes out the top and down into the tank. Now I know some of the Kato might come out here, so what I might do is put a little fine mesh right there. I think I have some laying around. Kind of just zip tie it to make a little guard. Let's see what I got. Oh my gosh, I'm such a hoarder. I actually do have this stuff. Seriously, talk about budget reefing to the max. This whole thing. I got this pump for like a $10 coral trade. $3 for this, I already had the parts. I mean, but like the whole thing, we're talking sub 15 bucks maybe. I mean, that pump, I mean, people have these things going around all the time. So this is about the cheapest thing we can get. I already had the light, the light was 20 bucks. I mean, if you wanted to make this and actually make it nicer than what I did and actually have like strainers and stuff and a better pump or a bigger pump, you're talking 40 bucks with the light? I mean, that's an easy DIY any day. I must say, I do love my sump, but the one thing I'm realizing is that if I had a blank canvas, I could do so many more mods to this sump. So if you can see those little baffles right there, I'm sure, yes, there's cords everywhere. I gotta readjust stuff. Those baffles, they are just gummed up with coralline algae because I did have that light in here and it just started growing coralline algae everywhere. So in order to raise and lower, there's a little knob you have to twist. And that knob is exceedingly difficult to twist and to get it going. 
up and down. So yeah, I hope that this bucket here, my little Kato reactor will prevent any of the light spill and gumming up everything on that weir because it is just not good. All right, it's time to go in. The only thing I did was add a little bit of silicone around the nozzle right there because when I kind of cut into it, it was a little too short. So then I, or too narrow. So then I went a 1 16th up and then it just gnarred the crap out of this. So I added a little bit of silicone and hopefully it works. All right, so forgive the mask. I'm gonna have to clean up all this crap, but you can kind of see it is working and then it is catching most of that, those fine filaments of Kato. Unfortunately, the Kato is not doing too hot because it wasn't really growing well in the bag. So it's kind of just sitting at the bottom and collecting a bunch of stuff at the top and draining in. So I'm using the bag to kind of catch the remaining Kato, little pieces that kick out. So this is about 100 gallons an hour. Um, I mean, I could do less. I can definitely dial it back, but it looks not too bad right now. All right, so I turned off the water and the water level is rising. And I didn't calculate that this thing would also tip and rise slightly when that happens. It looks a little janky this way. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is put a little bit of uh, rubble or something at the bottom to keep it from, you know, kind of tipping sideways like this. But it's not gonna overflow, that's for sure. Okay, so my solution to this for not tipping over is to only run the pump when the light is on and not do it 24 seven. So it will kick on around 2100 and then go off at nine. So pretty good chunk of time. It'll be about 12 hours of time where this pump will be on and the light will be on the same time. So I'll be back at you in a couple hours when the refugium turns on. All right, so this is working like a charm. You can kind of see it's flowing in there kicking up a little bit of it. It's not quite tumbling, but you know, 100 gallons per hour is better than, I don't know, probably didn't even have that running through the sump. So this is working really well. I know that, you know, ideally this should be kind of flush with the top, but I could always raise it up an inch or two. I could put it on, you know, maybe like a lid or flip one of these puppies over, two of them over, or make a little platform just to raise it up. It's not that big of a deal. It's actually catching a lot of the light. So I'm really happy with it. All right, guys, it's nighttime on the reef and everything is looking good. So far, so good. I hope that this DIY little reactor is gonna do really well. This Kato grower reactor to keep everything nice and tidy in the sump. And hopefully it's going to go a long way in reducing my phosphates in the tank and hopefully I solve my um, phosphate issue and old tank syndrome with this DIY little Kato reactor. So if you saw the first video, it's my old tank syndrome. My second video is the DIY, um, you know, Kato reactor. And the third video in the series is hopefully, let's cross my fingers and maybe I'm predicting the future. Hopefully um, solving my old tank syndrome, I can go back and review everything that I've done and see if everything has worked. But that's all I got for you this time. If you like what you see here and you wanna see more, click the subscribe button, give me a comment, give me a like, and let me know how you like this DIY build. I will see you guys later.